There you go. Hey, what happened with my background? Let me see. Um, there we go. Oh, I see. Para que no vean aquí la ventana atrás. So welcome, guys, and thank you very much for joining today. How are you doing? How was your day? Let me share my screen. Okay, can you hear me, guys? Yes, of course. Perfect. I have been so busy. Oh, really? Traveling oh. through, uh, traveling through the Panamericana is a street, principal street. Highway. Mm -hmm. From highway uh -huh. from San Salvador to Jocoro in in Morazan. Oh, really? Actually, that's yes. a tough trip. <laughs> yes, trying uh, ma making uh, trying to solve a uh, administrative uh, problem, uh, not problem, administrative paper mm -hmm. to uh, the pension of uh, of a relative. Oh, and, I see. And, and, when the secretary checked the the papers, mm -hmm. <laughs> the lawyer get uh, half a, a big mistake. Uh -huh. He put he put the thirty of February. <gasps> oh my goodness! Really, <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. And the secretary told me Sec February just have twenty eight days mm -hmm. and twenty nine point times, yeah. and I say yes. Yes, uh, <laughs> you need to come back to San Salvador to think to to solve to rewrite the the the, the paper to and correct the mistake. Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, so it's time for you to change lawyer, Elu. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I told her. I told her uh -huh. uh, you are going to pay me twenty dollars for the gas oil. Because uh, I am not to to spend my money mm -hmm. traveling just for an error, her error. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, actually, if I, you know, if I had been in that situation, I would probably, you know, um, paid. I mean, to the other person, right? Because actually, yeah. if it was my mistake, so I would definitely go ahead and do something about it, right? Or if 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 it's not, you know, um, me, the one that, uh, I mean, if, if I'm the lawyer, I would probably have um, traveled, right, where the other person was, so I could go ahead and uh, correct the mistake. But yeah, definitely, you were, I mean, you were... I would say uh, right, right. Um, if you were requesting like the, the 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 payment for the gasoline, I mean, something needed to be done, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I hope that she's, <laughs> she's going to solve this situation. Very good. Thank well, you. And, Thank you for for listening to me. Yes. Oh, no, you're welcome. And you know what? A, a leap year. It's what we call año bisiesto. Ah, leap year. It's leap a year. new word for me. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's a leap movie. Year. Actually, I I remember. Uh, I learned that uh, with, with a movie with. I think it's um Ray, um Rachel McAdams is her name. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I I watched the movie and I and I was like, <sighs> why is it called leap year? And it's that año bisiesto. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so, well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining today. Um, second thing that I would like to uh, say, guys, is that we were reviewing, you know, uh, the exercises and all this um, material in homework. Uh, no, it's not homework assignment. The sections that you have available on the platform, it seems that, it seems that not all of you have completed, you know, uh, at least until section three or the midterm exam. So I was contacted today by the person in charge of your group. And she wanted me to go ahead and let you know, like to give you a reminder, right? Just to remind yeah. you that um, you need to be working guys in your uh, exercises, all of you, right? It seems that there has been a decrease, right? In the amount of uh, exercises that you have completed compared to the ones that, I mean, to the speed that you worked um, uh, in the previous 
module, right? So that's the only thing, remember to complete everything. I mean, in my case, I think I'm able to see that, right? But uh, what I've done is that I've trusted you, right? And I know that probably if, if you haven't completed some of the some of them is because there's a, there's a situation probably you didn't have time probably you were tired etc but just try to take advantage of those um, you know short breaks that you might have during the day so that can help you you know to complete all your exercises so, okay así que please verdad y completemos los ejercicios para que ah and by the way i think she uh, posted today in the whatsapp group that you need to send the documentation, right? She says here, um, ah, dice, en un momento les estará llegando, bueno, luego del anuncio que ella les hace, ¿verdad? Sobre los, sobre los ejercicios de la plataforma o el avance de la plataforma. Eh, en un momento ahí se les estará llegando la invitación de reinscripción para el siguiente módulo. Traten de enviar los documentos en el plazo establecido. Entonces, si ya están pidiendo los documentos, chicos, es porque ya tenemos que ir avanzando en la plataforma. Así que, please, 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 uh, complete the exercises para que no tengamos, pues, que, que de repente uh, atrasarnos, ¿verdad? En lo que es la, la inscripción. Así que, let's go ahead and pass the attendance, right? And we're going to begin with uh, the information that we have in the, in the, in the, in the manual. So, Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Present teacher. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you, Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present teacher. Thank you, uh, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Joven. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you, María Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ibis Méndez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, um, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present teacher. Thank you, Zulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. I'm here. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's begin. So today is our session number seven. Tomorrow we are going to complete section three and the midterm exam. Today is March 8th. By the way, happy Women's Day for the women that are, you know, in the meeting. So I hope you had a great day today and that you were able to congratulate your peers, right, at work. Now, let's move on to something that um, I just mentioned yesterday, guys. And today we're going to talk a little, a little bit about the order of adjectives. Now, order of adjectives, it's a topic um, that actually we study in an advanced level. Uh, at this point, uh, we already know what, a, what an adjective is, right? And we know that an adjective is a word that describes, right? or tell something or tell us something about a noun that's what a what a what an adjective does right so it's a word that gives a characteristic about this noun okay so this information is what you can find in one of the videos that the instructor shows right words that describe or tell about nouns or pronouns right those are 
adjectives. Well, what else do adjectives do, right? Well, actually, um, they make sentences more interesting and they give details that make your meaning clearer and they'll they tell what kind or how many you know um they are right in this case nouns so pretty much guys um one of the uh things that i have noticed when it comes to adjectives is that they are called modifiers some modificadores why because they are given information about nouns and they also come and they modify nouns right so they change um probably the meaning of what we are saying as in point number three give details that make your meaning clearer right so she presents this list right of um the order right of the adjectives within a sentence let me be honest with you there are plenty of you know options plenty of um like sequence when it comes to the adjectives but this one i think it's very complete let me see yeah this one is is called like this uh, there is one that we can find in oh give me a second creo que abrí todos los todas las cosas dos veces i don't know why give me a second Ahí está. <clears throat> so i was saying uh, in English, there is a um, very um, well-known, you know, um, sequence of adjectives. Y se lo voy a compartir con mi Adjective order. The name is this one. I'm going to type it here. If you type on the internet, this is what you're going to get. Osascomp. Osascomp, it it's the order right of or sequence right of adjective order in um, English. There are also like different you know um, options. It would depend on the amount of adjectives that you have, right? But Osascomp, if you see, it represents this. Aquí representa todo. Look, we have opinion, size, age, shape color, origin, material, and purpose. Entonces, si usted quiere recordar toda esta tablita, no hay necesidad de aprenderse lo de esa forma, solo con que se acuerde de esto. And we are going to find the order of the adjectives before the noun, right? So that's going to be opinion. Okay, then we have size, then we have age, shape, oops, sorry, shape, uh, we have color, right, color, we have origin, origin, we have material, and we have purpose, okay, so, osascomp. Now, before, ¿qué es lo que tenemos antes de eso? Bueno, tenemos un, uh, una palabra que es un determinante y que nos va a ayudar, ¿verdad? A eh, especificar, right? It says uh, that this inform, right, if the adjective is singular or plural, definite or indefinite, next or far, etc. right? Let's listen to the pronunciation of the word. Determiner. Determiner, right? It's a... Determiner. determiner, determiner, right? So that determiner is going to help you to express that. ¿Y cómo lo hacemos, teacher? Bueno, simple. Okay, so let's take a look at one example. Uh, one uh, red apple is on the table. Okay, one red apple is on the table. So I have here, ah, por cierto, okay. Before here, we have the determiner, right? Determiner. And at the end, we have the now, okay? Entonces, this one, it's important, right? 
Sometimes we have it in singular or plural, but we are going to find one, okay? So <clears throat> I have here the color, right? And I have only one adjective, red and apple, right? So one red apple is on the table or a red apple is on the table, right? So in that case, what I'm saying is that this one, it's an in, an indefinite, you know, um, article, just an, an apple, right? So a red apple is on the table. Pero si yo de repente, um, let's say that I gave this apple to, um, to the teacher, right? And I tell the teacher, hey, teacher, the red apple is on the table. So I'm talking about one apple specifically, right? And that's the one that I gave her. Hey, teacher, um, the apple that I gave you, right? The red apple is on the table, right? So in that case, I'm talking about one specific apple, right? But if I say, ah, a red apple is on the table. So I don't know. I don't know who's that apple. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who is the owner of the apple, right? I don't know if it's yours. I don't know if it's somebody else's, but a red apple is on the table. So you have to remember this uh, very quickly, right? I'm going to explain. We have the indefinite articles, A and, we have the definite article, right? The indefinite article will be to talk about general things, right? Um, the, it's going to be to talk about something specific, right? An important uh, thing that we have to remember is that if if you have already mentioned that, right? Or, or if you're going to talk about it in general, um, probably it would be better to go ahead and use, you know, the uh, indefinite article, right? But if you want to talk about something specific, please use the um, the, in, the definite article, ¿de acuerdo? Or I can say, as I was saying before, right? One red apple is on the table. Or I can say um, uh, three, Three, three red apples are on the table. So with these examples, what I'm trying to say is that you can find any determiner. Look, aquí tengo un indefinite article, un definite article. I have numbers here, right, etc. Okay, entonces, this is going to be the determiner, right, um, position. And then after that, I'm going to, you know, um, uh, how can I say, organize, right? Or put into different categories the, the, the adjectives that I have, okay? So um, over here, do you have questions about the uh, any of the words that you have in the list? Opinion, size, age shape, color, origin, material, purpose. Any questions so far? Preguntas? No. Not yet, okay, very good. Now let's take a look at here, at uh, this chart, okay? So the determine, uh, determiner, I'm sorry, as we were saying before, it will help us to inform if the adjective is singular or if it's plural or if it's definite, or indefinite, next, far. ¿Cuál sería un ejemplo con next and far, uh, teacher? Well, I can say something like, this apple, no, these red apples are for the pie. These red, no, aquí sería, Perdón, these red apples. Vamos a ponerlo en plural. These red apples are for the pie. Okay? Así que, please don't eat them. <laughs> no se lo vayan a comer, ¿verdad? These red apples are for the pie. Okay? Entonces, this means that I'm talking about plural y que están cerca de mí. Right? Pero si yo digo those apple, those red apples 
R for the pi, I'm talking about something that is not close to me. I'm talking about something that is far. Ah, uh, you know, those apples that you see there, please, those red apples are for the pie. Don't eat them, right? Entonces, ¿a eso se refiere cuando están lejos o están cercas? Cerca, perdón. Okay, so take a look at here. Okay, examples, a card, an apple, the book, the flower, this man, that woman, these computers, those teachers, right? Entonces, ahí tienen todos los determiners que pueden encontrar antes del nombre. Now, opinion, right? There are some adjectives, guys, that depend on your opinion, right? For example, you can tell me, um, oh, look, that's a beautiful color. And I can say, mm, I don't like that color. I don't think it's beautiful, right? I think it's just nice, but I don't think it's beautiful. So it's there are some adjectives that have to do, you know, with uh, our point of view or our perspective, etc. An opinion adjective explains what you think about something. Other people might not agree with you. Examples, silly, beautiful, horrible, difficult. Because let's say, for instance, right, that I just finished an exam, an exam and then I see my classmate and I tell him, you know what? That was a very difficult exam, a very long, I mean, difficult, long exam. And the other person can say, can say right, no, it actually wasn't difficult. I think it was very easy. So our opinions, you know, will be different. We will not agree probably with the other person's uh, point of view, etc. Now, the second one is size. Size, a size adjective, of course, tell you how big or small something is. In this case, we have large, tiny, que significa pequeñito, tiny, enormous, little, right, uh, big, etc. Then we have age. Um, the age of, of the adjective tells you how young or how old some, some, something or someone, right? Because actually sometimes we talk about things, sometimes we talk about people. So how old something or someone is, for example, ancient, antique, right? New, young, old, etc. So then we have shape. With shape, right? Uh, as you know, we have different vocabulary words to express shape, but actually it describes, you know, how um, the silhouette, right, of your uh, object, etc. We have examples, squared, round, flat, rectangular, right, um, etc. Then we have the color of the adjective. Uh, well, color, it's a British, uh, the British version, right? So it would be color, North American English and color, right? Which is British English, pero los dos palabras significan lo mismo. Esa es la única diferencia. One is the British version and the other one is the North American version. Then we have a color adjective, of course, describes the color of something. Blue, pink, um, reddish, gray. No sé si ustedes se recuerdan o si están en estos módulos desde el básico, pero... Al principio, cuando están viendo los colores, eh, ven una parte en donde habla sobre eso, que al agregarle um, ish al color, ¿verdad? Entonces lo hacemos como, nosotros decimos, ah, es que estaba como verde, verdoso, algo así, ¿verdad? O rojizo, ¿ok? Uh, no, no me acuerdo del color, pero era algo así como, no sé, como rosado, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando nosotros queremos decir eso en inglés, ocupamos ese ish. Bluish, right? Reddish, reddish. I'm sorry. Um, uh, what else? Brownish. I don't know. You name it, right? So no, no con todos, verdad? Pero al menos con los que usted pueda manejar, that's totally fine. Then we have origin, right? The origin of an adjective describes where something something comes from, verdad? Uh, the origin. Actually, we're talking about where it was made, right? French. Lunar, American, Eastern, Greek, right? Then we have material. A material adjective describes what something is made from. 
So this is important. And sometimes we express that, especially when we're talking about objects, right? So we say wooden, metal, cotton, paper, right? Uh, feathers, right? Fabric, etc. Those are the materials um, that were used to make this item, right? And last, we have purpose. Dígame, este, Rafael. How, how do you say in English, carton? Cardboard. Sorry? Cardboard. I'm going to type it here. Cardboard. Yeah. Cardboard. Like that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, cardboard, it's more like... Um, mm -hmm. Como cartón de caja, ¿verdad? Yes. Ah, pues sí. Cardboard. I'm going to show you some examples. This is cardboard. Look. Cardboard, right? And then we have the other word. Mm, there is another word. Let me think. Pero este es más que todo para como cartulina. Um, cardboard is cartón. Um, I don't remember the word. Give me one moment. Tengo que acordarme. M moving box, ¿no? no. Moving box. No, es que, es que siempre creo yo que la cartulina le llaman cardboard y también al cartón. But, I don't know, es que se me decía que tal vez había visto otra palabra, but actually, no. Um... Mm. Give me a second. Yes. Es esto. Sí, está. Ah, ajá. Eh, cardstock. También vaya. Es que ese es el cartón. Cardboard. And then um, a la cartulina es. Ya lo que, lo que he escuchado es cardstock. ¿Verdad? Cardstock. También construction paper, le dicen, ajá, construction paper, cartulina siempre, ¿verdad? Y también esta, craft paper, craft paper, como para hacer como manualidades, ¿verdad? Entonces, cardboard es cartón, luego cardstock, cartulina, también construction paper o craft paper. Mm -hmm. Ok, cool. Let's see. Now, um, then we have uh, the purpose, right? We were saying that the purpose describes the, what something is used for. These adjectives often end in ing. Example, sleeping, right? As in sleeping bag, roasting, as in um, roasting thing, right? Whenever, for example, you buy the coffee beans. The coffee beans, coffee beans son ya los, los granos de café entonces sometimes some people buy the coffee beans and they and they buy that rusting tin right so it's like they rust them first and then they ground the the coffee beans so after it's grounded they prepare the the coffee right uh then we have finally the noun the figure that is receiving those adjectives right so um i'm going to show here in the WhatsApp group, I'm going to show you some like clues for you to remember, right? The, the order. Mm, okay, aquí está. Give me a second and I'm going to share it with you. I think this one is okay. Downstairs. Vaya, chicos. I'm going to share with you the same um the same order, but I in it what's up. So as you can see, it's the same order that we have, and also you can find more examples, right? Take a look at the first one, right? So we have the same uh word order, opinion size, age, shape color, origin, material, purpose, and finally we have the noun. Obviously before we have the determiner, right? So look at that. Opinion, attitude, observation. So that depends on you. Delicious, lovely, nice, cool. 
right? Eh, size, eh, age, ya hablamos de todos los que están ahí, right? And then before adjectives plus nouns, we normally have a determiner, ¿verdad? Y ahí hay más, más ejemplos de determinantes. A and, the, my, your, your, her, for, this, those, some, etc. Eso es lo que vamos a encontrar antes de todos los adjetivos, right? And there you have an example. A wonderful, large, round, Spanish, marble table. Well, actually, that's a very long sentence, pero hay, y por eso es que está este, este, este organizador, right? Entonces, vamos a ver el ejemplo. A wonderful, uh, large, round, Spanish, marble, a table. Okay, so a wonderful large round Spanish marble table. So let's take a look, right? A wonderful. What is this, guys? What is wonderful? Maravilloso. No, no, no. I mean, in the. Is it an adjective? Ajá, uh -huh. pero de la clasificación. Opinion. Opinion. Very good, opinion. right? So, wonderful is opinion. What about large? Size. Very Size. Good. Okay. Round. Size. Shape. 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 Spanish. Origin. 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 Muy bien. What about marble? Material. Material. Very good. And finally, we have the? No. The now. Very good. Exactly. What does a marble mean? Oh, uh, ma marmol? Mar marble? Oh, marble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marble. Yep. Sí, ma marble. Very good. So there we have one, you know, example. That, that one is a long one. It includes a lot of exercises, as you, I mean, a lot of adjectives, as you can see, right? Then you have, right after that, another one. It says, my brown leather riding boots. Let's see. Uh, what is mine? Vamos a ver quién se acuerda. Mine. Is it is pronoun? Um, possessive pronoun? Possessive pronoun. No, no. My if it is a um, pronoun. It's pronoun. a possessive adjective, possessive. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to share something with you. And this is important because we need to call things by its name. Okay, hay que llamar la, a las cosas por su propio nombre. This one, um, no. Uh, let me see. Give me a second. Let me look for one that it's... Ah, ese está mejor. Look, I'm going to share with you this list. Possessive adjectives, sí, aquí está. Look at this list, the one that I'm sharing, ¿verdad? So, lo primero que se nos viene a la mente cuando vemos algo así es un pronoun. Sí, pero no, en este caso no. Look at the list that I share with you in WhatsApp. And if you see, mine is a possessive adjective, ¿ok? Possessive adjective. Entonces, ¿qué es brown? ¿Qué sería brown? Color. 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 What about leather? Material. 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 Writing. The writing. Purpose. 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 Very good. That's purpose. And boots? It's the noun. The noun. Exactly. So we're saying that the, the color is brown, the material is leather, and the purpose is writing. So I use and use for writing. And those are my boots. So this is the noun, right? Very good. And there is one last example there. It says the little old man, right? The little old man. So what is the? The term. In, in, in definite, uh, defin, defin, definite, 
Objective. Adjective? Determinant. Okay, that's a determiner, but what is the name of the determiner? In def, I mean, it's a definite, como decía Liu, a definite article, right? It's a definite, definite article. Ar yes. This one, it's indefinite article, right? It's a determiner, yeah. but it's an indefinite article. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent, guys. Okay, so there are, you know, like uh, several combinations, right, that you can make. And the most important thing for us is to identify, right, um, how we are going to organize um, those specific um, adjectives, verdad? Uh, I don't know, guys, tell me, have you tried to complete, you know, the exercises that we have right after it? Because in the platform, uh, this is, let me see, uh, Order of modifiers, it says the order of modifiers. Les llama modifiers because they are, you know, changing. They are changing the um, the noun. So they modify the noun. That's why they, they call them orders of modifiers. So those are adjectives, right? So right after it, we have a listening, right? Um, then we have a, a reading exercise. So tell me, have you had any problems with uh, those um, particular exercises? Mm -hmm. No? I didn't do it. I didn't. Ah, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, and I know. But yeah, uh, as I was saying in the, um, at the beginning of the class, guys, don't forget to um, to, to complete your exercises, right? Más que todo porque acuérdense que los chicos que están encargados de su grupo necesitan pues ver el adelanto de lo que ustedes han hecho para que ellos puedan empezar su, um, por decirlo así, el proceso de ustedes, ¿verdad? Para para que los puedan eh, um, como inscribir en el siguiente módulo. Es como tal, es como reservar, creo que así es, ¿verdad? Es como reservar el, el, el digamos así, el cupo para ustedes, ¿verdad? Entonces, let's do something. Um, I can't, no puedo mostrar este ejercicio que voy a hacer, que quisiera que ustedes hicieran, porque no, pues no es de nosotros, no está en la plataforma, pero les voy a compartir un link en este momento. Can you go, guys? Por favor, todos en su, en su teléfono o en, aquí en, en, el, en el Zoom, ¿verdad? En los dos se lo compartí. Ay, no, se re WhatsApp por accidente. Voy. Pero aquí en el de Zoom les compartí un link, ¿verdad? Y ya se los comparto a través de WhatsApp también. I need you to go there and I'm going to give you five minutes for you to complete the exercise okay so you have it in your um whatsapp group and also you have it in the zoom chat please go and put into practice what i was explaining please go and put it into practice okay try to classify the adjectives that you have there So I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. I'm going to give you five minutes. Let's see, five minutes. I'm going to delete this, save here. Y ahí van sus five minutes. Please let me know when you finish, okay? I'm going to send you this as well.
in the first two, Elio, I can see that there are some uh, some that do not belong to that particular uh, position. Okay. For example, the first one, right? The first one should be, an, I'm going to type it here. Um, an empty small square box, right? Empty small square box. So empty in this case would be opinion, right? Because for me it's empty, right? Empty, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. small size and square shape. And at the end, the noun box, right? Okay. Double check mm -hmm. the other ones. Oh. At the end, it shows you, right? It says checked answers. So you click on it and it will tell you if they are correct or not. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> what do you get? I got I get a uh, let me see. Mm. Wow. I don't know that. Huh? I cannot find the the Do you mean the 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 option for you to click and check your answers? Yeah, yes. Okay, I scroll it scroll down, scroll down and at the bottom you will be able to see where it says check answers, hide answers. Yeah, check, show, I want to check answer. Check answers, showed answers. Uh -huh. So click on check answers and you will be able to have them all checked. Okay. What about the rest, guys? Were you able to finish? Yes. Very good. Excellent. So raise your hand if you have already finished. Okay. So I know that um, the ones that I need to wait for, for them. So I just have uh, Claudia. What about the rest? Claudia Marcela has already finished. Raise your hand if you have already finished, please. Okay. So time's over, guys. Ya se nos fueron los cinco minutos. Let me know. Were you able to finish? Pudieron completarlo? Yes. But okay. I got one wrong. Oh, okay. Oh, but, but at least you, you tried and And that means that you have a better understanding on the topic now. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to share with you another one, but these ones, I mean, a couple of websites, right? But these are for you to do it later, okay? Because um, I know that we need to continue with the class, but these ones are for you to uh, complete them later, right? Over there, I'm sharing them through WhatsApp group and through Zoom. Uh, let me check. There we have one and here we have another one. So do it later, right? So you can practice more with with um, additive order.
Ahí está, ahí se los dejo. Okay, excellent. So that was, you know, like the most important um, a feature from the last part of section number three, right? Also, I would like to mention very quickly something about the manual that I think it's important, okay? Um, in the manual, you know, um, down below this section, we talked about um, city features yesterday, right? So we talked about, um, you know, um, those important aspects or features that we um, look for in a city, either, you know, if we are visiting the city or if we live in the city, right? So some of the ones that we studied yesterday are the ones that you see on screen, climate, cost of living, crime rate, cuisine, green spaces, hotels, job markets, landmarks, neighborhoods, uh, nightlife, shopping, transportation system, et cetera, right? So, but down below, okay, we have um, two things that I would like to point out. Number one, useful expressions, okay? When you agree and when you disagree with an opinion. I think these uh, phrases are important to handle, right? For example, if you agree with someone, right, you can use these phrases. They are very short, but instead of saying, yes, I believe so, or yes, I think so, you can say something like, I think you're right, or I'm with you, that's true, or I think so too, right? So you can use these agreeing expressions if you, you know, um, share the same point of view as the other person. But to disagree, you can use phrases like, mm, I'm not sure I agree, or maybe, but don't you think it is better to practice, you know, online than to do it uh, in person? Or really? Hmm. I know what you mean, but I think it's better to practice, you know, uh, in person because you have the opportunity to talk with uh, more people, etc. So this is something about uh, the um, information that we have uh, in the manual, right? Down below, aquí está quizás lo, lo que yo, de lo que yo quería hablar, está una parte de organizing ideas, okay? I don't know if it happens to you guys, but it's very, like, sometimes it's very frustrating, the fact that whenever we, we need to write um, something, we have, you know, to try to organize and during our brainstorm, right? We have lots of ideas, but we forget, you know, to organize, especially when we have exams. No sé si en el caso de ustedes, pues, eh, es esta la única clase de inglés que llevan o si llevan otra más. But one of the things that I have noticed is that whenever you are asked to write something, to write a paragraph, eh, there is no, co um, co the ideas are not, you know, in, a very coherent way, right? So um, that coherence needed, you know, in a paragraph, it's something that we need to, you know, develop throughout times. Now it says making a mind map is a good way for organizing your brainstorming ideas. Mind maps help you map out the supporting details about your topic. Entonces, eso que ven aquí, estas como spider webs, vea, no. Sí, kind of. Esas se llaman mind map. Mind map. Right? And map out es lo que hacemos con los mind maps. ¿Verdad? Nos ayudan a mapear, decimos nosotros. O a, a tener como esa, esa, esa picture, right? The whole picture of things. It says, look at the phrases in the box about Cusco, Peru. Choose the main idea and write in the center of the mind map. Then write the supporting details and in the mind map, okay? So it says beautiful architecture, something for everyone, wonderful restaurants, great shopping, nice hotel, a mix of history and culture. Guys, which one do you think it's the main idea of this mind map? After reading those six phrases, Beautiful architecture, something for everyone, um, wonderful restaurants, 
great shoppings, nice hotels, a mix of history and culture. Which one do you think it's the main idea? Any any I, guess? I think that the main idea is a mix of history and culture. Okay, a mix of history and culture. Very good. Anyone else? Something for everyone. Something for everyone. Okay, very good. Uh, we have something for everyone and a mix of history and culture. Well, in my case, right, uh, after reading, right, uh, I will go actually with those two. But let's take a look at the reading. So read the paragraph about Cusco. Underline the ideas from the mind map in the paragraph, okay? Obviously, right, if if one of these is uh, the... Um, the main idea, the rest are supporting, you know, details, right? Beautiful architecture, wonderful restaurants, great shopping, nice hotels. So let's go ahead and find it out. So I'm going to read it for you because it's very blurry, guys. It's so blurry. I'm so sorry, but it says, Cusco has something for everyone. Entonces, that is ahí. The main idea we find is something for everyone, right? So Cusco had something for everyone. It's the oldest city in the Americas. And it was once the capital of the Incan Empire. Today, Cusco is Peru's tourist capital because of its interesting mix of history and culture. Aquí está la segunda. Pues vamos a... Vamos a... Subrayar, because actually this is why you have to do, oops. I know que estoy haciendo, give me a second. Ahí está. Mm, acá. Entonces, the first one is this one, the main idea, right? Cusco has something for everyone. No, pero se ve muy chico. Mm. Ahí está mejor. And I'm going to open the option again. Bye. Cusco has something for everyone, right? It's the oldest city in the Americas, and it was once the capital of the Incan Empire. Today, Cusco is Peru's tourist capital because of its interesting mixture of, mix, I'm sorry, mixed of history and culture, right? Mixed of history and culture. People who are interested in architecture will love the nearby Inca ruin, ruins, right, of Machu Picchu and the Palace of Inca Roca. Cusco has many places to stay, which range from first-class hotels to cozy inns. Let's take a look in here, right? Beautiful architecture, wonderful restaurants, nice hotels, great shopping. So let's go back here, right? Ahí está. Now we have already mentioned that. ¿Qué más podríamos agregar acá de las ideas que nos piden? ¿Qué más? Architecture. Okay. Uh, interested in architecture. Okay. What architecture. else? What else? Uh... Mm. Uh, play uh, many places to stay. Uh... Mm, okay, Ma uh, places to stay, right? And we, I mean, what are those places to stay? ¿Cuáles son esos lugares? Many cafe and restaurant and to restaurant where you can eat. Oh, okay, but the places to stay, you a cuisine, cuisine. Okay, inns, right? We we call them inns. hotels and inns, right? Very good. And you were telling me restaurants, right, Elio? Okay, restaurants. Yeah. Okay, something else, guys? Great market. Ah, okay. Uh, let me see. Solo falta que la teacher lo encuentre. <laughs> I guess that great markets. Okay, very good. Uh huh. What else? I think only that, right? Does it mention something about cuisine or food? Let's see. 
nice hotel, some mix of history and culture, wonderful restaurants, free shopping, and beautiful architecture. No, I think we're good. Creo que ahí estamos, right? Okay, great job, guys. So, whenever we are reading, y esto pues que nos sirva para los exámenes, de repente cuando hacemos un examen, ¿verdad? We need to identify. O sea, eso es lo que hacemos, identificar primero la idea principal, and then we identify, you know, the rest. Sabiendo, right, that this, the, the main sentence or the um main idea says Cusco has something for everyone that means that I'm going to mention you know those different areas that everyone will look for in a city and those are mixed uh, of history and culture architecture places to stay to stay that can be hotels or inns restaurants and great markets, right? So as you can see, all the ideas were found just by identifying what was the main idea of the paragraph, right? And from there, you can go ahead and look for the rest, okay? So that is just something that I wanted to mention. Me llamó la atención eso de, de acá del manual and I, and I wanted to, um, to point it out, right? Then I think there are more exercises. I'm not pretty sure, right, if they included all of them, right? But but here we have the orders of modifiers too, right? When two or more modifiers occur in a sentence, they usually follow this order, right? We have quality, size, age, typing. Now, by si ustedes se fijan, si ustedes se fijan, el orden que trae este en el manual es diferente. Por eso es que yo les comentaba, cuando vemos adjective order or orders of modifiers, se ven varias uh, opciones, pero las que, las que yo compartí y la que la instructora les comparte en el video es la más conocida y es la que más se utiliza, que es OSASCOM, ¿verdad? If you see here, aquí se tiene algo diferente, por ejemplo, quality. No, ¿verdad? Lo primero sería opinion, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos size, age, type. Mm, pues no necesariamente lo, lo vemos así de la otra forma, ¿verdad? Tenemos noun y descriptive phrases. Por eso es que siento que es más fácil manejar el otro orden porque es más claro y conciso, right? Que estar como memorizando otros que probablemente no son los que, ne, los que nos van a ayudar como a que se nos quede, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es el orden de los modifiers? Entonces, that was about it. Tomorrow we're going to talk about, uh, about um, the rest of the things that we have in the manual porque hay varias cositas que quisiera mencionar mañana. Aparte que mañana pues también vamos a platicar de lo que es el final exam. De acuerdo, pero please... Mañana, pues, trataremos de finalizar hasta donde nos corresponde, que es el midterm exam. De acuerdo. Entonces, I'm going to pass the attendance right now, and we are going to finish with the class today. Give me a moment. Solo déjenme buscar mi lista otra vez que no, se cerró. Aquí está. Bye. Today is the eighth. Um, ahí está. Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Here. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present. Thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Eh, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you, um, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you, María Susena Ayala de Flores. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ibis Méndez Albeño. Eh, Rafael Antonio. Present, teacher, present. 
Gracias, Neidy. Present. Uh, thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Rod thank, you, thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayem. Present. Thank you, Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thank you, Enzulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. Present. Thank you. Bueno, guys, thank you so much for joining today. And please write down your questions and your doubts. Complete the exercises. And if you have questions about the exercises, just let me know the number. And tomorrow we will check them, okay? So thank you very much for joining today. Have a good night. And let's meet tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye, guys. Good night. Good night. Bye.